So as you guys know, Corey's girlfriend, Danny, has many business establishments. Now she has a tax service. She opened up the Peach Factory in Dallas. Now she also owned a mental health facility in Dallas, which is where she was housing mental health patients. Now it appears that the house that she was renting for those patients, she's now getting evicted. It states that she has a three-day notice to vacate for non-payment of rent. You guys remember Corey was also evicted from his apartment in Miami for non-payment. So now Danny goes on to Facebook and she posts, I'm just like my man. One of the facilities chance to change wasn't meeting the goal. So I'm closing that one. 800 per month per resident wasn't making the cut. So who is about to continue to take money from their personal accounts to run that second home? So clock that T. I'm closing that one and I'm not paying ish until the state pay me. Also, I just hired an assistant last week and just fired her this week because I found out her family had a tax business and I provided her with 150 emails to send out contracts to my tax partners and she sent those emails to Arsenio Hall and they sent out a mass email. This is why I can't trust you jealous MFs. Back to another country next week. Kenya, here we come. So now Sherelle, the girl that's been exposing Danny for everything, went to explain in full detail what happened and how Danny put a lot of people out on the streets by closing that house. To be low down and dirty, but to sit there when people are literally at their wits end, have nowhere to go, nobody to turn to, and they've pretty much given everything to you and you act like you don't care. You ignoring them or you pretending like so much other shit in your life is so much better than so much more important than the shit that you actually have going on. The shit is sick. Y'all was asking me for a backstory behind Dan. She claimed to be this prolific ass millionaire, 14 million up. All these different businesses, some being funded by the federal government, others where she got the IRS in her pocket and she paying them $25,000, $30,000 to, to keep from auditing her and all this other shit. The same person who claims to be buying all of these different establishments, uh, apartments, condos, whatever the fuck it is, out of the country. A person who claims to have paid cash for so much shit is really out here fucking over people's lives now i just posted that she was getting evicted from the mental health facility that she claimed on the stand i kept driving by and going in and intimidating her worker well let's keep it a bean let's keep it a book right hand to the man on my kid's heartbeat if they drop dead right now i never drove by this girl's establishment well not by the mental health facility never drove out there fuck i'm going to fort worth for but finding out that she's being evicted from this place and then giving the people that's in that home a day to move out of the place because the man is basically going to have the writ of possession like it's his. Everybody got to go type shit. And you not helping these same people who paid you? Better yet, let's just read the email so y'all can get a better understanding of what I'm talking about. Dear Chestine, I'm writing to express my concerns and seek clarity regarding the recent situation involving the arrangements for my son and others in your care. While I understand circumstances may change, the way the situation has unfolded raises serious questions about the level of professionalism and care provided. We enter this agreement with the belief that you are acting in good faith, but your sudden shift in terms has left us with significant concerns. I'd like to know what I should expect to receive in terms of compensation via Apple Pay as previously discussed. $200 refundable deposit, $240 prorated rent, late fees the same as you charge if payment is delayed or if you expect us to vacate early without just cause. Should we begin to calculate the late fees or request compensation for each day we are forced to adjust? For example, a fee of $25 per day for each day of early departure or delay in payment could be reasonable given the disruption this caused. Furthermore, should we also take into account all the promises you made that were not delivered? It's only fair that we evaluate these unmet commitments as part of any further discussion. It has been suggested to me to contact the relevant authorities, including APS, Adult Protective Services, given the treatment of the individuals with disabilities under your care. So when I mentioned how them people was being treated in that mental health facility, how they had the best one, the smartest one, the more competent one handing out medicine because the people that was working there quit because Danny wasn't paying them. So how you have a mental health facility, but then you have the people that's supposed to be living there receiving care 
doing the work of the people that you're supposed to hire to be there. But you're getting all this money from the government. They're paying you X amount of dollars monthly, but you can't pay the rent. You can't keep the lights on. You can't keep the Wi-Fi connected. Make it make sense. But you're always there. Well, in your messages, you only go once a month. And that's to what? Collect money. Okay. Additionally, a report to the Better Business Bureau and other professional bodies has been recommended. However, this is not a step we want to take lightly. Our intention is not to harm you or your reputation, but rather to help you make better, wiser decisions that align with integrity and professionalism. This is your opportunity to correct course and demonstrate the compassion and fairness that these individuals deserve. We want to support you in building a better reputation and improving your practices to truly benefit those in need. It is our hope that you can see this as a lifeline and an opportunity to act with integrity. There are serious ethical concerns about profiting from the vulnerability of others. I sincerely hope this is not the direction you are taking. We are all here to serve and support one another, not to exploit those in difficult situations. What is your goal in this? Is it purely financial? If so, at what cost? Do you feel at peace with the choices you are making? I pray that whatever you sow in kindness and fairness will prosper. But I also pray that any actions that take advantage of others will not succeed. It's never too late to make a change and I hope you will consider taking the steps necessary to correct the situation. I look forward to your response and to working together in the best interest of all involved. And if you're a bit confused, let me break it down for you. In layman's term, this girl was receiving money. She was receiving money for the people that was living in the, the, the little mental health home. Not only was she receiving money, people for that was over, like guardians or whatever that was over the people living in that home, some of those people were paying her money via Apple Pay. But the problem arises when they're already receiving money for you to be able to take care of rent, to take care of utilities, to take care of whatever it is that those people need and you're not doing it. And now those people have to try to figure out where is this person going to go? Where am I going to send my son? Where am I going to send my brother? What other accommodations can I think of on the sly? Because you are taking money August and September, but you're not paying the rent. And here we are at eviction and you're putting us in an un uncompromising situation to where we got to disrupt our life and figure out what the fuck is going on because you can't uphold your end of the bargain, if that makes sense. You're very unprofessional. You don't like to communicate. And I feel like you're taking advantage of those who seem less fortunate to you. You're in this solely for the money. You don't give a fuck about anybody in your facility because if you did, you'd be trying to rectify the situation professionally versus me consistently having to reach out to you to figure out a resolution to the issue. That's what's going on. And it only gets worse. 6,000 emails I got to send out to a bunch of people, which is so crazy. But it, this shit is sickening. This shit, this shit is, this shit is just, this is low down and dirty. There is no fucking way you doing them people like that. There is no fucking way these folks are reaching out crying and asking for you to just be a businesswoman and you can't do it. But you consistently flexing how you out of the country buying this, buying that, investing in this, investing in that. When well, you got shit here in the country that you need to take care of. But I digress. I digress. As it unfolds, I will come in untold. I tried to make that rhyme. It didn't. But so about a month ago, Dwayne shared with everyone that he actually purchased his first home. Now, in Dwayne's recent YouTube video, someone asked him the question, why did he purchase his home by himself when he's in a relationship with Neek? Now, this was Dwayne's response. Um, let me see. Cause I'm on there. I'm trying to see what it is. Oh, they said I didn't see anyone ask this question. But how does buying yourself a home further the growth of you and your partner? Y'all three years in buying individual homes. Um, and I really wanted to answer that question. Me personally, I think, you know, Neek wants her own house too. And I think you. Sh I think she should have her own house because. As, you know, as the individual, I think everybody should own something. She should buy a house for herself, her and her son, just to have, just to own. That don't necessarily mean, you know, um, we won't have a house together. Or you own them. I'm not going to sit there and say, you want to buy a house with me? Because at the end of the day, say if we don't work out or something, she got 10 houses to choose from and I got seven houses to choose from to go to that. We just been putting in this time buying separate and we got 
three, you know, to pick between, okay, yeah, we're not together no more. Well, let's, you know, whatever, sell these three houses and split everything 50-50. That's the ultimate goal. Not to say that, you know, not to be together, but that's the ultimate goal to have multiple properties.